All right, we're getting closer and closer to having our app look like this, but we clearly see that we have a search box here. So in this video, we're going to work on having this interactive. Looking back at our app, we see that well, we definitely need a title and the search box. So let's create that. If I go to index.js, I think now that we're officially building an app, instead of having the car list component here, we should have one big component called app. And this app will be the father of all our children, all our components. Let's do that. Let's build the app component first. And this app component, again, will import React from React. And app will equal the card list component, which we can just copy and put in here. And again, changing this to Babel. We want to import the card list component. And we also want to have our robots actually imported in here. So we have access to it. And then finally, we now just want to render the app component. So we can just bring this back to the way it was. We save. We need to obviously export our app. So we'll say export default app. Save this. Let's go back. Yeah, everything is still working. Now, within the car list, we also have a header. So we'll do header one. That will say Robo Friends. And again, remember that we need to return just one single parent. So we need to do something like a div to wrap it. Oh, and I do need to close this h1 tag. All right, I have my robot friends title, and we also need a search box. And although H1 was easy and we didn't have to build a component for it, it sounds like we probably want to create a search box component for this app. So let's do that. I'm going to say import search box from a file that we'll create called search box. We will create a new file. And this file will have import react from react. And the search box will have a function that returns, let's think about what it returns. Well, it definitely returns an input, right? That is type of search. And let's also have a placeholder. Let's close this. And a placeholder that says search robots. We close this and save, and we have to export. Export default search box, save, compile successfully. All right, we have our search box, but well, it's not searching anything right now. Let's add this on a new line, just so it looks nicer. And it's always a good idea, just in case you want to add more things to the search box to wrap everything in a div. So I'm going to do that right now. And this div will just have a class name of padding2, again, using tachyons. And with the input, we can do a class name. And I just know these look good, so I'm just going to copy and paste here, just padding, or with background lightest blue. If I do this and let's go back, all right, this looks better. We want to center everything. So maybe in the app, we can just add a class name equals to text 
center. See if that works. There you go. That's much better. I like this already. Now, how can we make this interactive? Up until now, we've just had this static websites, but real websites are interactive, right? Let's think about this logically. We have an app. We have a search box. And we have a card list. But the search box component needs to communicate with the card list. And same with the card list. Card list needs to know what is in the search box so that it can filter out robots accordingly. Let's go back to our image that we have of one way data flow. Looking at this, we have the app component and then the card list component that has cards. And then the search box component that, well, doesn't have any children now. But in order for these two to communicate, we have a one way data flow. That is, they need to send their information to their parent, and the parent tells them what to do. Now, how can we do that? Up until now, we just had some data that we just trickled down, but we never had it where one of the children had to modify data or communicate with a neighbor. Well, in order to do this, React has an idea of something called state. Up until now, we learned about props, such as properties that we keep passing down. But we've never changed them because React just reads the props. If I go to card list, it just reads the props that it receives and it just renders something. And this one-way data flow is really nice because this card list is a pure function. It receives an input, and then it always returns the same output. So if robots are always the same, it's always going to return the same thing. It's deterministic, pure functions, and it's something that we've talked about before. And this is a really, really good thing. These components are what's called pure components, and some even call it dumb components. It just means that they don't really need to know about anything other than the fact that they're pure functions that receive something and return something. And this is really nice because we always know what this is going to look like. And that's all we had up until this point. But now we have to worry about something other than props. Props never change. Props are always just inputs that we get and we've never modified them. But in this case, we need a memory in our app. We need this to communicate with this and also change and update accordingly. And that's what state is in React. State, and you'll hear this in computer programming a lot, simply means the description of your app. A state is simply an object, an object that describes your application. And this state which describes our application is the robots and whatever is entered in the search box. And state is able to change. We're able to change the value of the search box, the value of the input, and we're able to change what robots array means, what gets displayed. This is a rule that you just have to remember. Props are simply things that come out of state. So a parent feeds state into a child component, and as soon as the child component's component receives a state, it's a property. That child can never change that property. The parent just tells it what the state is, and the child receives it as robots. So the first thing we need to do is to start being able to use state in our app, the description of what our state should be. So let's just do a constant state for now and show you that our state needs to have a robots array and it needs to have, let's call it search field. And this is just whatever our search field needs. But in order to use state, we have to go back to our original way that we created React components. If you remember this when we first did create React app. 
we create a class. And we do that by saying export default or export app extends react.component. It extends the component class. And again, we can use shorthand here and just say, so now we can just remove React from here. And this always has a render function that has to return something, which is this. Again, it's just the syntax that you have to get used to. If I save this, oh, and I made a mistake here. Instead of export, this should say class. So yeah, class app extends component, and then we do export default app. So again, we're just declaring a class. I save, and we just have something that says state is assigned a value, but never used. That's because that's pretty true. We don't use it. So how can we add state? Well, in React, we simply do a constructor. You might remember this from when we spoke about objects. And this constructor, in here, we can declare the state. We simply say this.state equals. And in here, we just put whatever we want our state to have. So if I save this, I get this is not allowed before super. Again, something that you might remember from the advanced objects video. In order to use this, we have to do this weird thing where we call super, which calls the constructor of component. If I do this and save, everything's working fine. And now we have our state which is robots and search field. And this state, as I've said before, is what describes our app. These are the things that can change. And that's what it is. State is something that can change and affect our app. And they usually live in the parent component, the component that is the parent that just kind of passes state to different components. So now I can access robots, not from here, but from this.state.robots. And again, just React syntax that you'll have to get used to. All right, so everything is working as expected. And you see that our state, which is robots, is now passed down as props. So card list accepts robots as props, even though in the app.js, it's state. And like I said, because app now owns state that includes robots, it's allowed to change it. OK, now the way we can communicate them, we have these two values. And ideally, in the search box, I have something called on search change, which again is a function that I'm just going to make up. This is just a random name that I've created. And on search change, I want to say that every time the input changes, just like we did with DOM manipulation, we get an event. And within this event, I'm going to console.log this event. I've created a function. And I want any time this input changes to trigger console.log. So we can pass this actually now. I can say search change is on search change. But again, because this is an object, we have to say this dot so that it says this, which is the app dot on search change is search change. If I save this and now go to the search box, I now have search change as a function. So I can just say, just like in HTML, remember in HTML, I can do on change HTML. It's an event. We're just listening to any time the input changes. I can say on change equals search change. 
Let's see if that works. I'm getting no errors if I go back to my app. I open up the console and I type in something. Look at that. I'm getting the event. And this is just something you have to remember is that with an event, we always have event.target.value, which should give us the value of the search term. Let's save that and type in something here. Look at that. We're now noticing the difference as we type. So let's go over one more time what just happened. And again, I know this is tough. This took me a while to get when we first started, but this diagram really explains it well. I have my app component, my search box, and my card list. Anytime the search box changes on change, I'm going to run the function. I'm going to call this function. And the way we call it is we add this. Remember how when we did DOM events, we define the function and then every time the event happens, it would call it. So we are saying every time the on change event is triggered, call the search change function. And if you remember the search change function, which is a prop, is the on search change function that is defined in the app. That's how we communicate with the parent. It triggers the event. The parent says, oh, run this function. And now this function gets ran. But now that I have the value of the search input, I can now directly communicate that search input to the robots list. Let's see how that works. We can create a variable, let's say filtered robots. And this will equal the this dot state dot robots. And these robots, which is the array, again, this is how we access state, is going to use filter, filtering our array. We give it robots. And now our array will have to return a condition. And the condition is going to be robots.name. And we're going to do something that we haven't seen before, which is to lower case. And this is a method that comes with all strings, and it just makes everything lowercase. And this is good for comparison, so we don't have to compare capitalized or lowercase. And if the name of robots, which is now lowercase, includes is another method, and again, it's pre-built into JavaScript. If it includes the search field, and again, we want to do to lowercase in case, well, in case we use capitals or lowercase, it works both ways. And there it is. If the name of the robots in lowercase includes, and this does the comparison, if anything in the string includes to lowercase, well, then only return the robots that returns true to this. So let's save. Oh, and you see here the, how I get the search field error because, well, it's part of the state. I have to do this dot state dot search field. If I save this, I get that filter robots is assigned a value but never used. But don't worry, we can now console log this and see what we get. If I save, and let's go back to our app. And if I search something here, oh, I get an error. And this is an error that is very, very confusing. It is tricky the first time, but bear with me here. The problem right now is that the value of this, well, it's not referring to the app. Because the event happened in the input, the value of this is, well, the input. And input doesn't have state.robots. And this is a trick that you always forget, but just keep this in mind as a rule of thumb. With anything that comes from React, so constructor and render are pre-built in React, anytime you make your own methods on a component, use this syntax, so error functions. And this makes sure that the, this value is according to where it was created, which is the app. 
I know it's confusing. You can read up more about it. I'll leave a resource for it. It's a tough topic to get. But again, rule of thumb, use the arrows. If I do this now and I click, there you go. I now get robots. But here's the thing. Search field right now, you see that I still have 10 robots. It's not really filtering anything. And that is because my search field is always an empty string. In order to update state, again, another rule of React is to do this dot set state. And it's, again, a method that comes with React. And anytime you want to change state, you always do this. You don't do this dot state dot search field equals. You never do that. You have to do this dot set state. And within here, we just say search field is, and again, we're using an object. So search field is now going to be event dot target dot value. If I save this and go back, you see that now everything is being filtered. So I'm changing the state so that the search field always gets updated. And now we're filtering the robots according to the changed search field. OK, so one last thing. Looking at this, we have the fact that filter robots is still not assigned. And you're right. If we look at this, we've now communicated the search box with the app. And we have the search field constantly changing. So now we need to communicate it to the filtered robots. What we can do is that filtered robots can now be used as props instead of this.state.robots. So let's do that. Let's move this down here. And now we have access to filtered robots. And instead of passing this.state.robots, we simply pass filtered robots. If I save this, make sure the search bar is saved as well. And now I go back. I'm going to close the tab and let's check it out. Look at that. We have our app working. How cool is that? Let's go over it one more time to show you exactly what it does. We have our app component that has two states, robots and search field. And because app owns the state, any component that has state uses the class syntax so they can use the constructor function to create this dot state. And this state is what changes in an app. It's what describes the app. Remember when I said the virtual DOM is just a JavaScript object? The virtual DOM is just a, an object that collects this entire state and React uses this state to render and pass them down as props to these components so that these components that are just pure functions can just render. And we always know that the app is going to look the same because, well, they're just simple, pure functions. We manage this state in here. The app is the only thing that can change this state, but it can pass down things such as props. So we pass down on search change to the search box. And the search box, every time there's an on change on the input, it lets the app know, hey, there was a change. Run this function. It runs the function with the event and updates the state of the search field to whatever we type. Now, with the information that we have from the search box, we can now communicate to the card list and tell it, hey, I want you to filter the robot's state to now have only what includes in the search field. And instead of passing the this.state.robots, we just pass the filtered robots. You might be asking yourself, well, robots never really changes, does it? We always just create a new array called filtered robots, and we always pass that down. Does this need to be part of the state? And right now, not really, because we just have a hard-coded robot. But when we get later on into the course, you'll see that that's not the case. Most of the time, you're getting the users or robots from another place over the internet, in which case we will need robots to change from an empty array to an array after we go and grab all of our users. Whew. 
All right, that was a lot. I know, I know it's a lot of information, a lot of new syntax, but as you can see, with a few lines of code, we built a pretty awesome app. In the next video, we're gonna finish this up and finalize our app so it looks as pretty as this. I'll see you in that one.